Sure thing. Hey, um, welcome everybody. Glad to be here. Turn my time on. The um, what I'd like to share with you now is uh, it's a preview of an article which will end up in the Sloan Management Review probably in December. And I want to make the following point, which is Gen AI changes fundamental fundamentally the way that organizations learn and what the compound economics are of that learning curve over time. Paul, we'll go to the next one. Um, some of you may be familiar with the notion called the experience curve, which was actually uh, articulated back in the 1940s by an aerospace engineer and then picked up by Bruce Henderson of Boston Consulting Group. And what he showed was that for every doubling of volume in certain businesses of manufacturing, you experienced a, a unit um, decrease in cost, in this case, 16%. Uh, so every doubling of unit volume. And this is really a combination of two things. One was cost absorption, indirect and uh, direct cost, you know, fixed costs as well. So you had, you know, fewer costs per unit. And then also an experience curve, that is learning. And the organization became much better at it. And from those of you who've heard other five minutes, I've talked before about the fact that Fred Taylor combined with uh, Henry Ford to actually do a new kind of knowledge transfer that was really what was underneath the phenomenal deflation and decreasing cost of the Ford Model T. Next. Um, we're working with a number of companies that are actually embracing this idea of Gen AI being a broad capability. And just to give you an idea, you know, Wex um, has trained over 3,000 of their employees. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan has put Gen AI and AI uh, capability across their organization. Walters Kluwer, the 4.2 billion euro business and academic information company also. So companies that understand this is an experience thing are beginning to go into um, wide dispersion of this capability. Next. The fundamental unit of analysis is now, as Paul was saying, humans and co-intelligences. Dialogue and tutoring. There's three fundamental reasons for this. One is you have uh, three implications. One is you're going to have dialogue enabled processes and products. Second, you have citizen programmers who like um, someone working in a in a machine shop and knows how to make the right jig to help you be more productive with the drill press. Likewise, that's happening with wins work throughout organizations. And then, of course, Gen AI allows for handling of unstructured data, which is the vast majority, 80, 90% of all data in organizations. Next. So how does this work? Well, fundamentally, this is a, a framework for a guy named Peter Keene from uh, 1978, where he was looking at decision support systems. Imagine how structured um, a problem or an issue is, and then how important it is, is it operational, managerial, and strategic? So operational would be, did it ship? Managerial would be, are the unit costs going up or down? Strategic would be, are, should we be in this market or in this product line at all? And what we're seeing is that humans migrate toward the unstructurable and Gen AI and AI allow for more and more structuring of problems, which completely changes the economics and takes managerial and strategic decisions to actually jam them to operational capability. We go to the next one, Paul. Here's an example we've talked about before. Jerry, The uh, this is a uh, uh, digital company that uh, allows people to choose among different insurance options as well as refinancing for their cars. So what they did is they launched for their uh, chatbots and for their uh, texting, they launched a series of uh, five chatbots that were deployed April of 2023. And you can see here that 100% used to be escalated to humans. By August, only 11%. And then 100% were replied to within 30 seconds. This is a perfect example of taking something that was semi-structured or unstructured and making it perfectly structured, fundamentally changes the economics. And they can believe they can do three times or more of the volume with the same folks they have now because you're changing not only the unit cost, but the nature of the scaling. We go to the next one, Paul. So if you're going to put this into an organization, you might remember I made the plea to think about Gen AI the way we thought about quality which is to have a broad set of capabilities from the white belt. We are just introducing people yellow belt who actually have a deep, deeper understanding of built a chat, bot, green belts who have taught that to others and to demonstrate the ability to implement at scale. And then black belts that spread that in the organization. Think of Gen AI's organizational capability and remember the experience curve compounding wins wins. 
That is, the ongoing economics improve over time if you commit to them as an organizational capability. 